Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Journal Club Reviews where we highlight interesting publications in video format. Today we review the paper by Bart and colleagues titled, Dupilumab for COPD with Type 2 Inflammation Indicated by Eosinophil Counts, published in the NEJM on May 21, 2023. The paper discusses the use of dupilumab, a fully human monoclonal antibody which blocks interleukin-4 and interleukin-13, in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, who have type 2 inflammation indicated by elevated blood eosinophil counts. While dupilumab effectively treats patients with type 2 asthma, it has not been studied in COPD. The study aimed to evaluate the efficacy of dupilumab in reducing the annualized rate of moderate or severe exacerbations of COPD, improving lung function and quality of life, and reducing respiratory symptoms. The study is a phase 3, double-blind, randomized trial that assigned patients with COPD who had a blood eosinophil count of at least 300 per microliter and an elevated exacerbation risk despite the use of standard triple therapy to receive dupilumab 300 mg or placebo subcutaneously once every two weeks. The primary endpoint was the annualized rate of moderate or severe exacerbations of COPD. Key secondary and other endpoints were the change in the prebronchodilator FEV1 and in the scores on the St. George's Respiratory Questionnaire, SGRQ, and the Evaluating Respiratory Symptoms in COPD, ers cop the efficacy was evaluated in the intention to treat population, which included all patients who underwent randomization, and was analyzed according to the trial group to which each patient was randomly assigned. Safety was evaluated in the safety population, which included all patients who received at least one full or partial dose of dupilumab or placebo, and was analyzed according to the treatment each patient received. In the study, a total of 939 patients underwent randomization, 468 to the dupilumab group and 471 to the placebo group. The annualized rate of moderate or severe exacerbations was 0.78 with dupilumab and 1.10 with placebo. The prebronchodilator FEV1 increased from baseline to week 12 by least squares, LS, mean of 160 ml with dupilumab and 77 ml with placebo. At week 52, the SGRQ score had improved by an LS mean of 9.7 with dupilumab and 6.4 with placebo. The ers COPT score at week 52 had improved by an LS mean of 2.7 with dupilumab and 1.6 with placebo. The numbers of patients with adverse events that led to discontinuation of dupilumab or placebo, serious adverse events, and adverse events that led to death were balanced in the two groups. The study concluded that among patients with COPD who had type 2 inflammation as indicated by elevated blood eosinophil counts, those who received dupilumab had fewer exacerbations, better lung function and quality of life, and less severe respiratory symptoms than those who received placebo. Therefore, dupilumab, a fully human monoclonal antibody, may be a potential treatment option for COPD patients with type 2 inflammation indicated by eosinophil counts. Limitations. This trial had limitations due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which may have affected the conduct of clinical research and patient exposures and behaviors worldwide, and may have contributed to challenges in recruitment and decreased frequencies of COPD exacerbations. There was also underrepresentation of black patients. Randomization was not stratified by smoking status, and the study's duration did not assess longer-term effects. Additionally, the study did not evaluate dupilumab's effects on COPD patients without type 2 inflammation. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if you would like to see more.